Joining us now is Ali Dabaj. He's the CEO of Janice Henderson, an investment firm with more than $300 billion under management. Uh, I said 250 before. It keeps, keeps going up. <laughs> We're um, trying. We're trying. <laughs> it's good. Uh, so I know you got a contrarian fund, which piques my interest, because what does it mean to be contrarian in this market? It's doing pretty well, too, up 16%. Yeah, look, the contrarian fund is an example of what we do more broadly, Janice Henderson, which is really to understand the stocks that we invest in on the equity side and the securities on the fixed income side or on the multi-asset side, multi-strategy side, uh, really well. And so in this marketplace where there's a lot of green and red on the screen, I think you're going to continue to see green and red. It's not all going to be green. It ain't all going to be red either, given the data is out there, is really understanding the haves and have nots within these companies. And that's what Contrarian Fund does. Uh, we have a fantastic set of portfolio managers and investors behind that fund. It really looks to pick out what's been undervalued in the marketplaces and really putting some heft behind that on behalf of our clients and our clients' clients, particularly apropos in this environment where there's so much uncertainty, mm. right? Um, Goldman is saying less than 15% chance of a recession. Others are saying much higher than that. We won't know until it actually happens, but I do think that's this, this opportunity to, to look at something like a contrarian fund uh, in the world of, uh, of, of an uncertain market environment is the right place to go. It seems to me like there's a mix of uncertainty and certainty, right? Because part of what higher interest rates bring you is, yeah. well, I can just put my money over there and it'll kind of be good, you know, mm -hmm. uh, versus expected inflation. What's the smart thing that Janice Henderson is doing with money when clients are bringing it to you saying, okay, I don't want to do it. You, yeah. you guys, let's let the smart people in the room uh, handle it. What do you do, say, with fixed income in an environment like this where it seems like the smart thing is pretty easy? Yeah, so it's a great question. Look, first off, every client is different, whether it be our retail clients or whether it be our institutional clients. They all have different goals. They all have different objectives. And they're asking us to help them with those objectives, not with a specific time frame, right? They want their objectives. So, so we look at that in the compendium of what they ask us to do. Now, within that context, one of the clear things that investors have to do, and typically a mistake among retail investors in particular, is to not diversify. They have to diversify. So you've raised Contrarian as a great example of some place where they could go. But we do think that, yes, having some short-term money in the marketplace does make sense, too. We have a number of vehicles that are uh, ripe for that, whether it be JAAA, which is our CLO uh, ETF, whether it be JMBS, which is our, our mortgage-backed security ETF. Those are areas we can do from the short-term perspective and have some money there. But you should also be thinking about the long term. There's an enormous opportunity right now which is overlooked in the marketplace in small and mid-cap stocks. Mm. Small and mid-cap stocks have been kind of thrown out uh, baby with the bathwater, so to speak. Uh, we have an enormous amount of confidence in the opportunities there, great track record for many, many years in picking areas within small and mid-cap stocks among these have and have-nots that actually are successful. There's short-term pain there, though, because when things get volatile, the small and mid-caps get hurt the worst, and, and the, the large-cap tech stocks have been the safe place to be. So how do you get into small and mid-caps in a way that, that doesn't hurt you too bad? Yeah, look, I think you've seen the pain. I think you've seen the pain in the small and mid-cap world right now. In fact, when you look statistically over time, when the S&P pulls back, at this point in the cycle, small and mid-cap pulls back even less so. So there's an enormous opportunity there, particularly if you're as mindful as Janice Henderson investors are in picking the has and have not companies within that world. Um, you mentioned technology. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple other places for us, too. We have real expertise in technology. So there, too, you can pick some of the larger ones, and there's some safety in there. People can debate, not my job. Others can debate whether the multiple is too high or too low on NVIDIA and others. But there are clearly good and bad companies in technology, which we should invest in. Healthcare is another great example. Mm. There are some real defensive names within healthcare, for sure. But I would argue that there's really interesting biotech companies within healthcare that our team has, I think, some of the best track records out there in choosing those companies within an environment where you can focus in on what the companies are doing as opposed to the uncertainty above that of what the world is doing and the market is doing, what the Fed is doing. You can pick a company that has a uh, good technology that's rolling out, a good pharmaceutical uh, product that's rolling out. That's how you can make money through thick or thin. And to your earlier question, that's what retail investors typically miss out on, is that diversity across sectors, across categories in picking the haves and have-nots. Nick Colas was on with us earlier arguing 5% in gold, right? And I kind of poked him a little bit with, oh, isn't crypto supposed to be the new gold? <laughs> Should people be putting money into either the old gold or the new gold up to 5%? Yeah, look, I, I think um, gold has been a, a, a standard for quite some time, and I think there's a little bit more, uh, uh, there's a little bit less risk to that uh, over time. Uh, from a Bitcoin perspective, look, it's still a little bit of a speculative bet. Now, if you take digital assets more broadly, uh, there's some that are more speculative than others. So if you want to have an allocation to digital assets, I get having some allocation to the more stable ones, like a Bitcoin. But again, uh, I think you have to look at it from a diversified portfolio perspective. You guys getting into real estate, even 
like eyeing commercial for when the opportunities arise? So we have a very big REIT franchise in particular. One of our core beliefs around the REIT franchise is that there's a huge discrepancy between the public market valuations and the private market valuations. Public market valuations and REITs right now for the same asset are significantly lower. That's where you want to get in. And so we believe our global REIT franchise uh, with a, a, a strong team, whether it be in Singapore or in London or in Chicago, is really strong at picking out those opportunities within the REIT franchise. But this overall theme of public markets being cheaper than the private markets, I think will bear well for retailers over time.